Well, Pakmati, thank you for joining me to discuss your wonderful new book, Does ASEAN Matter? A View from Within. Well, thank uh, you. It's a real pleasure to have you here back at the ANU. I have to say, I really enjoyed reading it. It yeah. covers so much about your personal experience, the journey of ASEAN itself, and there are so many aspects that are addressed from a personal level, mm -hmm. but with significant implications for the countries in ASEAN and for us in Australia. So, uh, I, as I say, it's a, it's a real pleasure to read, mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm just very keen to explore with you yes. some questions about it. I'm just wondering specifically, what prompted you to write this particular book? Well, uh, thank you uh, uh, for, for this opportunity and thank you for your remarks. Well, at least two, two types of uh, motivation really uh, why I began uh, to write what eventually became this book. Uh, first, actually, it was very much more of a note to file. It was really more, not really purposefully written for a book. It was for my own personal note to file in the sense of wanting to be sure that uh, my recollections of past events are, are not uh, impaired and are not forgotten. And then a motivation as well to take stock not only of the past, but also what remains to be done. Because um, I think I, I, I would rather I leave it to others to judge and to, to decipher uh, of the past uh, because I'm very much, too much was very much in it. Mm. So I would rather, uh, you know, the purpose of the book was really to, to be able to identify what remains to be done mm. uh, in terms of uh, given what, what I've done in the past and what I haven't done in the past. So initially it was very much a note to file, but having reflected on it and, and having shown uh, the note to some of my colleagues and they say, look, this is, uh, is, is something that I should be sharing uh, with the wider public. But beyond that, um, you know, actually here in, at the NU, uh, I was, uh, you know, browsing at the bookstore and uh, I read some books and, and uh, making references to certain events within ASEAN. Uh, and then I, I thought to myself, mm, this uh, description of factual events, uh, I think I can enrich it further by, by since I was very much within uh, those conversations. So those two type of motivations uh, sort of uh, uh, give me the in initiative to, to, to proceed. Yeah. Mm. Now you ask the question, does it matter? Mm. And you provide some compelling answers. Right. So I wonder if you could walk us through the argument, does ASEAN matter? And why do you think so? And to what extent is that the case? Well, I, I deliberately present it as a question rather than as a statement because I thought I need to um, encourage greater uh, sense of uh, uh, humility and open-mindedness and not to take things as a, as a given, as if ASEAN does matter. I thought posing it as a question sort of uh, liberate me from, from thinking within uh, my comfort zone and to really ask searching questions. And, and as a result, I thought at the risk of uh, oversimplification, I have noted at least three types of uh, transformative contributions by ASEAN. Uh, one is in terms of changing the dynamic uh, between Southeast Asian countries. Uh, prior to ASEAN, we had a situation where Southeast Asian countries were essentially uh, in either open conflict with one another or having very deep tensions and, and distrust of one another. Through ASEAN, we saw the transformation of uh, trust deficit to strategic trust, where the notion of having an open conflict among Southeast Asian states, ASEAN member states, become increasingly uh, 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 less likely. Uh, not only that, transformative in the sense of ASEAN's relations with the wider region. Uh, prior to ASEAN, the Southeast Asian countries were very much uh, like pawns in major power relations. But through ASEAN, we've seen their transformation, or the transformation of their position to become central in the region's architecture buildings, for instance, and not least transformative in the, in the material benefit that ASEAN has made possible in terms of economic transformation. Uh, very much work in progress and a major footnote uh, in respect to the so-called people-centered ASEAN, I think, 
is the notion of an ASEAN that is more uh, sensitive to human rights issues, sensitive to governance issues. Uh, we began a conversation on this, but clearly this is very, still very much work in progress and one that cannot be uh, you know, declared as being entirely successful at this time. But those are at least the three types of transformative uh, contributions that I thought ASEAN has made. But most importantly, uh, given that, uh, what's next? I mean, how do we ensure uh, we continue to be of relevance? Yeah. Mm. Now, ASEAN has been the subject of considerable criticism. Absolutely. It's got its detractors, there's no question. Mm -hmm. There are those who even call it a broken reed. Mm. How do you respond to those? Well, yeah, I mean, throughout its history, um, the obituary on ASEAN has been written mm. many times over. You know, I mean, uh, immediate after the resolution of the Cambodian conflict in the 80s, early 90s, some began to ask, you know, what is the, the, the glue that binds ASEAN together? Mm. Uh, but ASEAN always managed to reinvent itself, uh, finding a new cause to rally around. Uh, but, oh, I'm, and I'm confident, uh, notwithstanding the, uh, the obvious shortcomings of ASEAN, even today, that the uh, ASEAN will, will be able to to reinvent itself and to find a new uh, cause around which to rally their, their, their efforts. But uh, this requires a great deal of leadership among ASEAN member states, uh, certainly not a business as usual uh, mindset of complacency, because uh, all ASEAN's uh, resilience in the past, its transformative character have been uh, have come about not by accident, but by clear and precise sense of, uh, of uh, uh, you know, I mean, direction of where ASEAN would like to develop next year. I really enjoyed your opening chapter, mm -hmm. the historical review from 1967 uh, mm -hmm. through to 2017, uh, giving us an insight, mm -hmm. a, a personal insight that uh, I think is really worthwhile dwelling on. Mm -hmm. But I wonder if you, look, looking back at that period mm -hmm. and having studied it and written now about it, you could comment on some areas where you think things could have been done differently? Mm -hmm. Well, there's always room for, for improvement and there's always work uh, left unfinished, uh, incomplete. You know, I can immediately think of two during my own term under my watch. One is the expansion of ASEAN to include Timor-Leste. Mm -hmm. I, I thought um, Timor-Leste, when they uh, applied to join ASEAN in 2011, at the beginning of 2011, uh, that was a very critical moment uh, under Indonesia's chairmanship uh, uh, and yet we were not able to, to, uh, to take advantage of that momentum. Uh, I do believe this, was, uh, this is very much a, 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 a subject that needs to be revisited by ASEAN because I believe a Southeast Asia, an ASEAN community that excludes uh, Timor-Leste is one that would be less than complete uh, than should be. Uh, the other one, I think another I wish uh, that I had uh, uh, completed is the uh, accession by the nuclear weapon states on the Southeast Asian Nuclear Weapon Free Zone uh, Treaty. This is, uh, as you know very well, uh, Southeast Asia's efforts to contribute to nuclear non-proliferation in our region. And there was a window that uh, opened up for the accession by nuclear weapon states, but somehow Mm, because of expression of reservation uh, upon accession by the United Kingdom and by Russia, ASEAN allowed that situation to essentially, uh, 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 you know, um, uh, resulting in the postponement uh, of the ac of the uh, accession of that uh, agreement by nuclear weapon states. Those are the two obvious ones, but uh, the management of internal developments. Uh, within ASEAN is always uh, is a, is a perennial challenge. Uh, developments in Myanmar uh, and many other, uh, other situations in other parts of uh, Southeast Asia will all, always be uh, issues that demands ASEAN's uh, management. Yeah. In Chapter 3 you write about ASEAN shifting from being a Cold War pawn mm -hmm to ASEAN centrality. Yeah, absolutely. Can you walk us through what happened there? Well, I, I'm not sure, I can't speak uh, for others, and I, I, I emphasize in my book, uh, everything that I wrote there is my own personal view. Uh, 
But for me, from the very beginning, I have a very clear sense of uh, a script on, on which to really pursue ASEAN's, uh, you know, I mean, uh, outlook and policies on geopolitical developments. And because I saw, I've, I've seen like a, a very clear uh, development at the early end of ASEAN, early 1970s. We saw ASEAN very much, uh, very minimalist in its outlook. ASEAN that speaks of neutrality, a zone of peace, freedom and neutrality. And if you, one was to read that uh, declaration, it speaks of ASEAN, Southeast Asia being neutralized. Uh, so it is an active pacifism almost that we, we are saying uh, to the rest of the world, the major powers, neutralize us. We don't want to be part of your competition. Uh, opting out, so to speak. From that type of you know, very in, uh, inward looking, don't bother us, uh, neutralize us. We saw an ASEAN that began to become more confident. Uh, the Southeast Asia nuclear weapon free zone outlook, ASEAN with having external relations with through its dialogue partners, of which Australia is the first, the ASEAN Regional Forum, the East Asia Summit, uh, a very clear progression of ASEAN's uh, increasing confidence. Uh, in its ability to uh, to uh, shape and mold the region's architecture, but beyond convening power is where the challenge is. Uh, it is relatively easy, given the comfort level others have of ASEAN, for us to be able to organize things, to organize events, summits. But it's, it requires far more, uh, you know, diplomatic uh, finesse and heft and thought. Uh, in terms of providing the, the narrative uh, to, the, to those uh, gatherings. And this is where I think the challenge is at the moment. Uh, we are at a crucial uh, stage in, in, so in this part of the world, the debates such as the Indo-Pacific discussions. Uh, ASEAN must have a script uh, on this type of issues. This is where I think is the challenge. But we can see a trajectory of ASEAN's increasing activism, and not always um, clear in terms of constant progress, but certainly constant engagement with our region, yeah. You wrote about a shift from a state-centric to a people-centric mm. ASEAN. Mm. What did you mean? What's well, this is, this is the one, uh, you know, I'm a little bit ambivalent. Uh, I have some, the, the, the record is a little bit mixed here. Uh, first of all, I think in terms of, of official them, in terms of official statements, we have seen a definite shift because if one was to look at the original ASEAN documents, Bangkok Declaration and the like, very clear, it's a very state-centric uh, uh, outlook by, by ASEAN. But increasingly, more and more, we have references to people-centered ASEAN, people-centric uh, people, uh, ASEAN. And, and I think principle, the principal manifestation of such people-centric ASEAN has been in the economic domain because uh, by creating, make, making possible prosperity in our region, that is the ASEAN's biggest contribution. But ever since 2003, uh, when we began with the ASEAN political security community, uh, Indonesia has been trying to introduce the notion uh, that people-centric ASEAN is not only about uh, material uh, well-being, but also about governance issues, about human rights, protection and promotion of, about uh, demo, demo, promotion of democratic principles. This is uh, where I think the, uh, the record is a little bit mixed. So we have now all the wherewithal, because thanks to over the past more than 10 uh, a decade work, we have all the various instruments within ASEAN, uh, but those instruments on human rights, on democracies, will remain uh, mere potentials uh, in the absence of any uh, strong leadership within ASEAN itself, because those instruments need to be needs to be put into effect. Otherwise, they remain in abeyance, they remain dormant. And Indonesia's leadership in the past uh, has been extremely critical, because uh, uh, these, these are domain where, unlike in the economic domain, where there's market forces at operation, in operation, these are a domain where we need hand-holding, we need nurturing, we need prodding, we need pushing. And uh, in the absence of Indonesia taking the lead, as the, it has in the past, I'm afraid uh, such a project will quickly grind to a halt and we can see like a regression in this area. This is where I think uh, uh, um, continued leadership by Indonesia in this domain becomes extremely uh, critical. 
But Mati, you, you're, you're launching the book here in Australia. Uh, how do you see ASEAN Australia relations at the moment? Where are they going? Mm. What do we need to do to make them better? How can we change things? Well, uh, ASEAN Australia has been, no doubt in my view, uh, ASEAN's one of the ASEAN's most reliable and most trusted partner. Uh, after all, Australia is ASEAN's first dialogue partner, if I'm not uh, mistaken in my recollection. Mm. And all throughout, uh, you know, whatever issues of import in our region, there is always some kind of uh, Australia ASEAN footprint. Uh, you know, the Cambodian conflict in the 1980s, uh, figures such as uh, Professor Gareth Evans, yes. who then as Foreign Minister of, As of Australia took working closely with the late Minister Ali Alatas, they were instrumental. In, in providing uh, uh, Australia, ASEAN effective and positive contributions. Mm. So whether it be in the geopolitical domain, in the economic domain, Australia, ASEAN uh, partnership has been critical and this year, especially 2018, received uh, even more Philip because we had the uh, the ASEAN leaders uh, meeting here in Sydney, in, in Sydney, mm. uh, I think for the second in March of this year, tremendously important. So. Is, uh, is, is one of the stabilizers, I believe, of the region's peace and prosperity. Yeah. But Monty, you, you, you did your PhD here at ANU. I wonder if you can tell us a little bit about your time here at ANU. Well, it, I must say, uh, being here at the ANU in Canberra in particular must, must be one of the happiest time uh, for me and my, my then very young family. Mm. Uh, you know, we, we were, that was our first experience uh, living abroad for a rather longer period of time, uh, you know, we were not only enjoying, I mean, the, the campus, the, the university was tremendously conducive to pursue one study, but uh, the city, uh, Canberra, the people here in Canberra, they were so welcoming. I make so many friends uh, in, 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 the, in the campus and beyond, which will, will continue to, to, uh, to uh, to enrich my, my have enriched my experience and and really you know whenever subsequently since when I became foreign minister of Indonesia and and uh, and problems arise between Indonesia and Indonesia uh, Indonesia and Australia you know I get a I think I better have a better sense of the uh, the mood and uh, what could be the dynamic here in Australia. Uh, having spent some some time here, and my wife and I, Sranya, and my my kids, we, we love our, our time here, and that's why whenever uh, there is an opportunity to come to Canberra, we are, we are, will be will be on the plane. Wow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Bakmati, I wonder if you have any advice for young graduates. Well, uh, there is not one size fits all, right? I mean, everyone will you know each every one of us uh, will chart their, his or her own uh, situation and uh, uh, uniquely the, uh, theirs. But at the same time, uh, uh, one of the things that comes to mind basically for me is not to underestimate uh, one's capacity to make a difference. And, and uh, you know, when everything is uh, going, you know, all around you may not be as conducive, just uh, stick to your principles and, and, and just uh, press on and, and continue. And, and uh, the ANU here, uh, you have given a lot to Indonesia uh, in terms of so many Indonesian students who have spent time here and who subsequently become uh, important figures in, in Indonesia's uh, body politic and beyond. And uh, so I don't have any, any wisdom that can apply to all. Because everyone will have their own, uh, uh, you know, their own uh, uh, path, so to speak. But one one thought that I wanted to share is the not never to underestimate one's capacity to make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Mati, thank you for your very candid and very illuminating yeah. answers to these important questions. Thank you. Drawing on this fantastic book, does ASEAN matter? A view from within. Thank you, Mati. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.